In Fast and Furious 6, after they had a fight with Riley at the train station, she met up with Shaw and his team. And she said to Shaw, we lost Ivory, he's gone. Shaw said, thanks. Lay said, that's it. Shaw said, if Ivory's dead, he made a mistake. If you make a mistake, you pay the price. Lay said, that's a great eulogy, Shaw. Are you going to give the same speech for the rest of us? When we go out, Leo and Shaw confronted Lay in private. You're the last one I'd have pegged to be sentimental. I like you, Lay. I dare say I even feel a certain warmth towards you. When I found you in the hospital and you couldn't remember anything, I said to myself, this girl has a gift. She's a blank page that made me feel somewhat protected towards you. If something happened to you, for instance, I think I might find that slightly harder to bear. What I'm saying is, I would hate to see you make a mistake. Lay said, I'm going to get some air. So, you know, the lesson is, Shaw is like a typical gangster. And, you know, those of you that are in gangs or thinking of joining a gang, that's what people are going to be like. You know, you may think, you know, um, it's going to be, you know, loyalty with my friends if I join with my friend. But then Leon, he or she could betray you. And, you know, I'd be very surprised if someone, you know, was loyal. I never stereotype, but generally speaking, I am going to you know, think it's just going to be treachery in business because, you know, gangsters, they put money first over personal feelings. So, you know, this is the thing, you know, if you expect, you know, someone to be, you know, sentimental towards, you know, a gangster friend you lost, you know, like your boss, who's maybe like, sure, don't expect that. So, you know, people are going to be cold in that business. So, you know, don't think about joining gangs. If you're in a gang, get out of it, hand yourself to the police, you know, snitch on them going to witness protection you know that's the only way you, you're going to overcome them you know they have that and you know they have that fear on you and then they're going to threaten to kill your family and friends well your family and friends are going to have to go into witness protection because that's your fault and maybe they will die maybe they won't but you know unless society takes a risk then the gangs will keep rising and then you know they will so you know that's the only way you have to take the risk someone has to take the risk and that's why you all have to snitch and get out of there Maybe you'll get pardons if you do snitch. I can't guarantee that. But if you are sorry and change, you know, um, maybe, you know, some lawyer listening to this can, you know, um, ask you to get a pardon once, you know, they're in prison. And that's why, you know, people that are dangerous, they shouldn't be allowed phone calls or visitors. You know, I'm sorry to say, but this is something that needs to be taken, you know. You know, um, now some of you in leaders, sorry, maybe one of you, well, you know, disagree with this, they have the right to talk to people, family members, but I disagree. If people are going to get killed, then this, you have to be extreme and leaders have to make extreme decisions, just like I've asked for the death sentence to be back when it comes to corrupt police officers keep, when they keep on killing black people, a leader has to have the balls to make those decisions. And then, you know, if that person changes and you could tell he's sorry, you know, um, then fine, let that person get in touch with their family and friends. But if not, then, you know, you need to make some, you know, decisions. And in prison, the same thing, you know, people shouldn't be allowed out of cells. That's why stabbings and rapes happen. Let them stay in the cells, have a shower in the cell or something. I don't know. They kill themselves. That's their choice. But in the end, you know, I'm sorry to say, unless you are able to afford and hire people to be in every cell, literally, fine. But, you know, when they go in the showers together, people are just going to get stabbed. So you need to be extreme and make them isolate the cell. Like they did the crime. They don't deserve to be entertained. They can learn from it. They can, you know, maybe read books like positive thinking books, you know. And this is what I want to talk about. You know, like Anne Milton's books, you know, he was a soldier. And, you know, um, I want to talk about the quote where, you know, Shaw said, um, um, if you make a mistake, you pay the price. So, you know, he talks about one of his books. I read, um, if you hesitate on the battlefield, you're going to die. And, you know, what I'm trying to say is, if you do hesitate, that's the price you're going to pay. You're going to die. Maybe you'll get lucky if someone saves you, but nine times out of ten, you're going to die. So, you know, that's why it's important when it comes to not just on the battlefield, off the battlefield, you know, the, the, the task of life, when it comes to taking risks, you um, don't hesitate because that's when, you know, you wobble. And when you wobble, you can fall, you know, down really badly and get hurt unless... You know, somehow you adjust very quickly or someone saves you. But then what I want to talk about is positive thinking books like that book. You know, prisoners can read that in prison in their cell, you know. 
you know, I'm not saying, you know, um, give them video games and stuff. I don't know about that. You know, um, I think they need to learn their lesson first before they're entertained. They prove, you know, they've, they've changed with uh, someone that's able to, you know, observe the psychology of that person, fine. But, you know, leaders and government people need to have the balls to make the decisions I keep talking about because when I go viral, you know, people are going to agree with me on this and, you know, you lot need to speak up in the time because you're going to say, no, fair enough, there's nothing I can do or they can do. But the thing is, you know, prison people keep getting killed and raped. So when is enough? When is enough? So this is what I'm saying. Things need to change in prison and it can change, but only if a leader... And, you know, I never stereotype. I believe there is a leader, a government person out there that will have the balls to do this. But if not, then, you know, what kind of leaders and government people do we have? Do you want people to die in prison? If you do, then you may as well just kill them before they go to prison or otherwise give them a chance to change, which I believe some people do deserve the chance to say, to change, sorry. And some people, you know, do deserve to die. But, you know, to me, that's only something God can decide or, you know, someone that's, you know, selfless, caring, you know, um, has good intuition and instincts like a soldier, someone, something only a soldier can decide, you know, whether they believe in God or not.